many people do wonder that what is representation learning though people know about it and especially in the field of deep learning or machine learning people do talk much about it but as we know that there are a number of things which are related to representation for example when you represent something there are a number of features which are related to that particular representation so can we call it a kind of feature learning or it is something different no it's the kind of same thing and we can see over here so the wiki says that the feature learning or representation learning is a set of techniques that allows the system to automatically discover the representations needed for feature detection or classification from raw data so like the deep learning does it takes the raw form of exactly raw form of data and detects the feature automatically similar sort of thing is going to be done here so now we jump onto the kind of representation in the form of figures so you can see over here that uh, it is some sort of default representations then you have the deep neural network and then you have good semantic representations means uh, either you have clustered them either you have um, uh, identified some sort of pattern or something like that means point is that uh, there are different sorts of variations with respect to any model with respect to any representation but ultimately it is kind of out of raw data you are going to get some meaningful information so that's the whole point here so now as we always uh, relate and always discuss every uh, topic or every domain with respect to some research based uh, work or with respect to research based information so we are going to do the same over here so it's the uh, representation learning a paper uh, that is a kind of a review and uh, this review is going to include some new perspective it got published in 2013 so bit old uh, but uh, kind of a very good publication published in IEEE transaction on pattern analysis and machine intelligence a quite good journal so in this work the uh, authors uh, they are saying that they have uh, hypothesized that uh, this is a, a kind of uh, uh, different representation which is going to depend on the data representation and uh, different representations obviously use that sort of entanglement and that entanglement is going to help you to hide more or less the sort of different factors of the variations behind the data so in this way you can see that different sorts of variations or different sorts of representations are possible and it and uh, some of the key factors are there and those key factors always uh, means uh, decide the kind of representation that you are going to get ultimately in the last so just moving forward this particular work is going to uh, offer you a lot of information uh, if you are starting means as a beginner researcher then uh, go through the basic introduction then uh, the basic question that why should we care about the learning representations so this questions again catering the need of the uh, starting researchers who are very new to the field of learning or the representation learning so there the learning representations uh, what sort of uh, different uh, possibilities are there those are supposed to be get discussed over here then uh, they are talking with respect to the speech recognition signal processing and the sort of object recognition nlp means uh, the kind of different applications are discussed over here with respect to the kind of representation learning prospects now coming over to the different form of learnings and the multitask domain related things they have also provided here and uh, when you go to any particular work then uh, there are different sorts of uh, representation with respect to, to deep neural networks if they are uh, using the concept of neural networks and especially in the field of deep learning so uh, the related things uh, and their layer structures uh, the sort of uh, different sorts of models etc all the things are given over here and as i always mention that with respect to every deep learning paper you will find lots of uh, mathematical representations so if you are going to work in the field of deep learning do have a good hand in uh, basic mathematical notations because uh, if you are not good in basic mathematical notations which are going to be, be part of any mathematical model you are going to have some difficulty while reading all these papers because every sort of feature every sort of representation might be might be defined in the form of some mathematical notation and those notations might be coming from some other notations so ultimately you define the behavior pattern of the neural network and then how that network is working because as i showed you in the figure that ultimately from the raw data you are picking up some of the patterns with the help of deep neural networks so that's the point over here now there are different sorts of other things including uh, uh, the and uh, directly learning a parameter map means they have discussed the parameter map concepts over here 
and uh, they have discussed the representation learning as manifold learning then uh, they have used the sort of uh, connections between probabilistic and direct encoding models so different sorts of all deep learning and the sort of neural network related things are there and uh, those are going to get uh, contributed to the field of uh, representation learning now uh, these are some of the related things if you are interested you can go through the work uh, not very lengthy work but still uh, good enough uh, length so i will just uh, tell you some of the basic things that is related to this particular field which is representation learning and as we always jump into a new field there are some of the key things uh, for example the kind of divisions that you are going to find in that particular field so again uh, the kind of learning can be divided into two uh, usual uh, groups. Uh, one is the supervised representation learning, second is the unsupervised learning. And uh, when you are having the representation learning concept, it is concerned with the training machine learning algorithms. So that is uh, useful for the specific type of learning and uh, that makes it interpretable having kind of uh, different useful latent features and uh, that might also be used for transfer learning. So these are different sorts of things. Additionally, the deep neural networks uh, are usually uh, considered for representation learning models and uh, they help you to encode the information which helps you to project that into different subspaces. So that's uh, the basics. Additionally, when you come into the field of uh, any deep learning or sort of things, there are different data sets and the models are related. So with respect to this also, it's said too. So you have a uh, SCI docs data set, you have the sports 10, you have Cypher 10. We have made a particular dedicated video on Cypher 10 also. So if you are interested, you can go and have a check onto the database list. Then you have the animal 10, et cetera. Coming to the basic models, you have the morphological network, you have the ResNet 18, you have the um, uh, Psi and CL, etc. And all these paper, all these models and the data sets are available in the discussion in discussion form in different papers. So you can go to the GitHub repository also. Some of the models are available. For example, for Cypher 10, you can get easily the GitHub repository. For Cydox, you can find the GitHub repository. And uh, you will find the additional information over there that how to use all those uh, kind of related libraries, et cetera. But uh, when jumping onto these sort of things, it means uh, any uh, sort of representation learning or sort of thing, what are the kind of key things that you can do? So there are different things that you can do. For example, if you want to have the graph representation learning, you can do over here. If you have the knowledge graph embedding, then you can do over here. If you need the multilingual word embeddings, you need the graph embeddings, you uh, need the disentanglement or the sort of learning representation of multi-view data. All these things are possible. And uh, additionally, there are a number of other things that you can do over there. What is the most important? So the question comes to mind that what is the most important thing that we should focus on while reading a particular work? Just uh, go through its uh, main methodology that how that particular work is finding a problem and how it is solving that particular problem. So you will find that there are some of the key gaps which are uh, there because uh, no paper can focus on fixing all the possible gaps in a particular domain. So there will always be some of the uh, shortcomings of a particular work. So go to ju directly jump onto the future work section there you'll find some of the related gaps where you can add on something in your work. Now, when we are talking that number of works are there, which are talking about the representation learning. So different works are there. I will mention a few because you can find lots of on Google Scholar or the related academic portal. So one is a deep high resolution representation learning for human pose estimation. This work focuses on a specific problem of human pose estimation. And uh, this is a PyTorch work uh, represented in CVPR 2019 and the GitHub repository is also available. So you can go and have a check. It is a quite good paper and uh, the implementation is also available. Moving further, then you have the InfoGAN, Info Generative Adversarial Network, which is the kind of inter, means this particular work focuses on the interpretable representation learning by information maximizing generative adversarial network. This is again a PyTorch implementation and it is uh, presented in Neuro IPS 2016. And again, the GitHub repository is available. Coming forward, then you have the other work, which is uh, the Bootstrap Your Own Talent. The title is quite interesting. There you have a new approach to self-supervised learning. So if you are going to find these sort of some different directive uh, papers, then these are going to uh, make you think into a different direction. So have a look on to that. 
Additionally, you have the representation learning with contrastive predictive coding. So that is a, a TensorFlow implementation. And uh, this is also available in the form of a repository at GitHub. So there are just three, four mentionings over here, but you can find more mentions and the other related uh, papers or the keywords at Google Scholar and the different uh, academic web portals. So that's all from uh, my side for this particular video. Hopefully you must have liked some of the related thing. If you didn't like anything, please do comment below and let us know that what we can do to improve the quality further. Additionally, there is always a suggestion that whenever you are reading or uh, seeing a particular video, reading a document, seeing a video, don't uh, just make a conclusion based on that. Always do the multi-source learning and uh, take the different factors into consideration because if you are a beginner into the field of research, don't uh, make hurry just to finalize your topic because many times we don't identify the actual shortcomings of that particular topic and it is not easily possible. That's why you need uh, at least one or two semester time to finalize your problem. Because uh, when you are finalizing a problem, ultimately your whole degree or sort of thing, uh, whatever course you are pursuing, going to depend on that. So be very careful while defining the problems. Uh, see actual potential into the topic. What are the key related things? Similar thing goes with the representation learning also. So take care of all these points. Hopefully the journey will be beautiful. So thanks for watching. Happy learning.